Well, in this video, I'm going to be opening this box of Japanese axes. Mm. That's... Are you right there, Lucky? Hey, you right? Now, where was I? G'day, welcome to Chestnut Nag. My name's Stuart Chignall. It's been ages since I've done an unboxing video on this channel because, uh, well, I haven't had many boxes in from Japan lately, mostly due to COVID. And this one has been delayed in particular due to COVID because it is a box of axes. Now, for some weird reason, you can't send long items via surface mail from Japan. So for things like, you know, full scale, you know, falling axes and hewing axes and so on, you've got to send them out via airmail. And the option for doing that was cancelled due to COVID. It's over a year. It's well and true. It's over a year and a half that I've been waiting to get this box over here. And, I, uh, and since I just did that video on hewing X bevel geometry, it's going to be interesting to see what we've got in here straight out of the box. Also, while I'm about opening this box up, what do you think of my new filming setup? Uh, the dappled light that I've had underneath the tree uh, means I've sort of tried to confine filming to overcast days, that, which was kind of limiting. But now with the gazebo and these panels, what I'm hoping is I'll have a bit more consistency with my filming. So first out of the box, we've got a Japanese falling axe. So what I think I'll do is I'll get them all out and then we'll go have a look at them in detail. Now I got these in a lot. I don't know much really anything about their provenance. Uh, I'm hoping they're a set though. The finish on these two handles looks very similar. And th these two have both got the this uh, traditional rope covering. Um, now, of course, that doesn't mean they're a set. Uh, but, you know, I'm hoping. So anyway, let's have a look what's under here. We've just got to work out how we open it up. And I think, yes, there we are. And that just peels off. Well, first thing I'm going to say, it is, um, that is a very nice axe. And for those of you come to come to this channel and watch the unboxing videos, because you want to get a, uh, a heads up on what's going to be available to buy when I, you know, when I start listing things for sale, I don't think that's, that, I reckon that's a keeper. I've got a number of candidates for falling axes that I was going to restore. That is better than any of the others I've got. That is gorgeous. See these beauty, these um, the Japanese characters on the back here. I'll try and get a, a better detailed still of those so you can see them. Um, more uh, heavier duty, heavily more heavily embossed stamps here. The traditional um, bear claw marks that most uh, Japanese axes have, and also a traditional wooden wedging arrangement. It's not, the handle's not looking in the greatest of nick, uh, but I think it would be serviceable. The only trouble I've got is it might be a bit short. That looks like it's a bit too short for me. It might be all right for, um, for falling, but if I'm gonna be using this for, for hewing, for roughing out, I probably want a bit of extra length. I wonder how much it weighs. I'll check that in just a sec. Now this one, It's, it's always confused me why there's no, there's no gap here. It's a little gap between the top of the beard and the handle, because often with a bearded axe, you want to get your hands in there, um, but you just can't do that with this style. This looks much older. The Smith work is much rougher. Um, it hasn't been used recently which makes me think that it's not part of a set with this one because this one, um, you can see it's, it's not that long since it was used. Like there's a lot of rust on here and so on, uh, but that edge is still pretty clean. Whereas, um, whereas this one, it's pretty, it's pretty pitted and it even looks like it's been rusty and then it's been cleaned up, but not restored, not sharpened. Now I would say that is definitely a strong apple seed bevel. Like most Japanese carpenters axes, it's a double beveled axe. 
and yes, quite a pronounced apple seed bevel, roughly symmetrical. Needs a bit of work because the line of the bit isn't isn't perfectly straight, which isn't a big deal for a roughing X, but it could be a bit annoying. I think the handle is knackered. If you see, that's that looks like it's cracked and split. There's a lot of movement there. Even if it was able to, you know, be used and not break, the vibration that that would create in the handle would just be horrid. So it's it needs it needs a new handle. What I would like to point out about this handle though, is look, you can see these tool marks. This isn't a handle that's been made in a lathe. Uh, this is an old style handle that's been fashioned with an ax and then possibly uh, a draw knife or, and then maybe finished with a spoke shave. But you can see as I move it around, I'm not sure if the camera's catching it, but I can see the facets from the tool marks reflecting the light in all different directions. And also look that it hasn't been, but haven't been particularly fussed with the finish. You see there's a lot of, you know, chip out and stuff there in the handle. And also, this was a discussion we were having the other day about, um, uh, about ax handles. A scholar Gladiatoria did a video on ax handles a little while ago. And one of the things that they said was that um, you needed a, a swelling at the end. If you're familiar with Japanese axes, you know that uh, well, they basically don't do that. In fact, old Japanese axes, I've never seen one with a swollen end on its handle. They all have this straight handle. Um, but that is a very old, well, reasonably old. It's a, it's, a, it's a handmade handle. It has not been turned on the lathe. This one, if it could be handmade. If so, it's a much neater job than this one. Well, sorry, not necessarily neater. It's a much more finished, polished, job than this one. Now when I went back and shot the b-roll for this video, all the you know, nice pretty close-ups I've tried to get you guys, found that this handle was indeed handmade. Now I can't get the camera to show it. I'm trying to move it around to get it to sort of catch the light like it did on the other one and it's not being nice to me. Let's see if I roll, roll it. Yeah, not really. Look, you can you you might be able to see the facets in the video. Um, I'm not sure that I can on my phone as I'm filming this, but as I run my finger across it, I can feel them, and it's a there's a lot more care and uh, effort has been put into this handle than the other one. It does have a little you know defect there, there's a sort of little a hole in the handle, but I can feel the facets from. The tool and because it's so smooth this is probably being finished with the equi Japanese equivalent of a spoke shave and I can just because I can just feel the facets there other places I can't like it feels pretty rounded but it's also note the transition from round or oval handle to the more square as it goes and it's very smooth and yeah there's, there's some faint facets there but geez it's pretty subtle you know, it's something that only really that, you know, your touch will pick up. Because <laughs> I can't get the camera to show it. Oh, maybe there, maybe. Anyway, trust me, it's a handmade handle. And finally, we have this beauty. Now, carpenter's axes are rare in general. But in, in Japan, single beveled cap carpenter's axes are rare as hen's teeth. And fortunately, I've been able to get hold of a few of them. This is the fourth one I've ever handled, and it is mighty fine. It's got interesting for, you can see the forge weld here, slight delamination, but that doesn't look like it's compromised at all. It's, no, it's not um, promulgating through the rest of the bit. It's not ready to use as is. In fact, I'm even wondering maybe if this someone just jammed this handle in so it would sell for more, because it's missing its wedges if it had them. But what's interesting is that back seems very flat. In fact, oh, it almost feels like it's got an ura in it. There's a slight hollow there. Wow, it does too. Look at that. Okay, right. <laughs> I just did a video on the uh, bevel geometry of hewing axes. And, uh, <laughs> and I said I'd never found one that didn't, never found a single beveled axe that didn't have a secondary bevel. And 
I published that video what, a week or two ago, and now I've got one that doesn't have the secondary bevel. But far out, that would be seriously aggressive. You'd have to really know about, be about what you're doing. That's a very nice axe. Unfortunately though, the handle looks a bit short for me. <laughs> well, that's it, very short video, only three tools out of that box. I've got two more boxes that are on the ocean at the moment, but they're probably, well, two months or more away. I am thinking about doing some more videos on hewing because I've got a friend that wants a beam uh, that's seven meters long for the top of their gateway. Now it's the kind of thing that, well, maybe you could scarf together two sawn beams, but it'd be pretty cool to do it out of one hewn beam. So I'm thinking for that job, I'm gonna restore the falling axe, and then I'm gonna make a decision out of the Japanese axes that I've got in the uh, need to restore kit and uh, make a decision about which ones I'm gonna bring back into service for that job. Now I've got no idea when that's gonna happen, let alone when I'm gonna you know, get the video published and, and out, but it's, it's coming. So if you don't wanna miss that, you, know, you can subscribe and hit the bell notification. What I will have coming up soon though, is I think the next project that I'm gonna be doing is restoring this ax or this hatchet, carpenter's hatchet. Again, you know, for a friend of mine. And I'm gonna to have to uh, clean, up the, clean up the head, sharpen it, and make a new handle for it. Uh, so if you wanna see that, that's probably gonna be happening much, much sooner. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Um, and um, until the next video.